בעצם MIT פורום הגדיר את היעד שלו לפעול בצומת where business and technology meet. וכשאנחנו מדברים על ביזנס, אנחנו לא יכולים להתייחס לנושא של ה-IP, של הקניין הרוחני. ובהקשר הזה ביקשנו מדוקטור פול פנסטר לדון בנושא של קניין רוחני. דוקטור פול פנסטר הוסמך כעורך פטנטים לאחר שעבד שנים רבות במחקר ופיתוח. כיום הוא שותף בארליך ופנסטר ועומד בראש מחלקת תמיכה בליטיגציה. דוקטור פנסטר ניהל את תכנון תיקי הפטנטים של חברות שנמכרו בביליוני דולרים ותמך בתיקים משפטיים בהם ההשקעות היו עשרות מיליוני דולרים. בבקשה דוקטור פנסטר. <coughs> בוקר טוב. כשאני בא לדברים כאלה ובעיקר כשאני הולך לאוניברסיטה לתת הרצאות על פטנטים אני תמיד האיש המבוגר ביותר בחדר. אני, היא לא אמרה, אני עליתי ארצה ב-71 והייתי המנהל הפיתוח הראשון ב-ECI. ECI אז לא היה ECI של היום, עשו אינטרקומים לצבא וטלוויזיות. אז זה מראה את ההבדל במה שקורה ב... תעשייה הישראלית, ואני גאה מאוד שאני ליוויתי בצורה זו או אחרת את ההתפתחות הזו. מכיוון שבמקצוע שלי אני מדבר אנגלית, אני עכשיו אדבר אנגלית. אוקיי. Okay. People really don't understand what we do. I mean, everybody thinks that people don't understand what they do, but I think in our case it's really true. We charge a lot of money. We cost even more than what we charge. And the question is, what do we do for the money? And what do you get for the money? And what should we be doing for the money, which unfortunately not all of us do? <clears throat> and uh, this is uh, something I have to do at the beginning of each lecture, so you can read it quickly and we'll go on. I, I really want to give you some idea about what we do. Now, I, I was in R&D almost 30 years. I've uh, been in the university. And the most interesting work that I ever did is being a patent attorney. And it's the only work that I've ever lasted in for more than three or four years. Uh, and perhaps when I'm done, you'll understand why. Our job <coughs> is to protect the client. Sometimes we have to force the client to accept that we have to protect them. But people have the idea, and in fact, I just, um, <clears throat> there's a course uh, given by uh, Bar Ilan for people who are taking the patent exam. So I give a few lectures in that course. And one of the students said, well, I always thought that, and this is after two months uh, or three months of, of lectures, I always thought that what we do is we take the things, we fix them up, we do a little editing, and we file it. Well, that's unfortunately not, or rather fortunately, not what we do. <clears throat> so under the way people understand it, and unfortunately the way many people's uh, experiences, they go to the patent attorney, they either give him something written or they just explain to him what it is. He writes it up. He doesn't really understand it. Uh, they uh, get the, uh, the disclosure. The disclosure is written in language uh, which they don't really understand. He writes a couple of claims. He, uh, they send it back to him, and everybody's happy. Except everybody's not happy when they try to sue somebody on their patent or try to assert it. So what we're going to talk about is what really has to be done in order to bring value to a uh, investor or a patentee or a firm or a company from the inventions that they make. Uh, just to uh, uh, have you understand, I have sat on both sides of the table. I have uh, 30 patents uh, that I'm an inventor. Uh, many of them have been litigated successfully. Uh, the, the idea of the patent of a, of a patent, and more importantly, of a patent portfolio is to add value to the company, to the client's company. It's not 
so that they can be proud of themselves, although there is that. I mean, when you show your wife your first patent, she's very, very proud of you, or your girlfriend if you're not married yet. Uh, <clears throat> but value can be added in a number of ways. First and foremost is to provide protection for the market in which the client is operating. Now, you notice I didn't say protect the product, because protecting the product is secondary. What's more important is protecting the market or the potential market that the client is trying to get into. Sometimes opening new markets for clients, and an example of that uh, is uh, Hounsfield, who invented the computerized tomograph. He worked for EMI. Uh, EMI, as you all know, is a big music company. Exactly what he was doing in EMI Nobody knows. Well, uh, EMI came out with the first computerized tomograph. It was not very practical, but it was revolutionary. <clears throat> and in the end, the big medical imaging companies, General Electric, uh, Philips, etc., passed uh, EMI uh, very, very quickly, and EMI went out of the business. Nevertheless, EMI made tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars in license fees probably made much more money from protecting their invention than they ever possibly could have made in with the with the product that they had that they had uh, built I guess that's a new market I can't think of any newer market for a music company than computerized tomography Protecting the client from infringement threats. Uh, when I worked for LSINT, we had a uh, patent attorney who later became my partner when we went into business, of, when I went into the patent business for myself. And LSINT was very, very active in uh, patenting, uh, really very active. And they had a patent attorney, and somebody came to him from GE and said to him, Here, are some patents of ours, I think you're, you've got to be interested in them. We think you're using them. So he said, okay, I'll look at them, opened up his drawer, took out three patents, gave them to the guy from GE, and said, why don't you look at these meanwhile? Well, he never heard from the guy again. That is not an unusual situation. And that is, again, one of the important ways of protecting the client and increasing the value of his business. because. There's n almost nothing worse than being the uh, subject of a, being the defendant in a patent suit. Being a defendant in a patent suit costs you a tremendous amount of money, disrupts your business and your management to an extent that you couldn't imagine until you've done it. And in the end, if you win, you're no better off than you were after spending two or so or three million dollars. And the idea that most people know about is it enables the client to raise money. In the present situation and for the last number of years, it is impossible or almost impossible to raise money on a technological project without having some level of protection. And one of the things that we try to do is to help the client to get the right level of protection if that's what he wants to do, if he wants to exit. Raising money, everybody wants to do. So our job <clears throat> is to leverage the inventions using patents to increase the value of the client's business and to advise the client what he should be doing in order to improve his position. Sometimes, I have a, a, a very broad uh, technological background, and uh, many, pa some patent attorneys do, can advise the client what they can do to improve the present product that they have from the patent point of view. Because remember, uh, we are the easiest kind of inventors. All we have to do is write it on a piece of paper. We never have to produce it. But sometimes, we need a certain amount of support for what we write.